So if you watched my last video on installing the carbon fiber steering wheel, I mentioned that there was something else coming that should have come in that package, but it just wasn't ready yet when they were shipping the steering wheel. And that's this, this is a new airbag cover for my Audi S5. Now, this is a little bit different than the existing one, and I'll throw a picture up here of the existing airbag cover, but this one is, uh, it's a leather black airbag cover, but it has this nice gray stitching on the outside, and most importantly, the rings have been changed out to be black. Right, which I like that over the chrome rings. The existing airbag cover really stands out even more now with the carbon fiber steering wheel. It just kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. And as I've been going through the process of adding black badges to the outside of my car and the interior of my car, not only has black seats, but lots of black and carbon fiber, I really want the airbag cover to match. Now, I'll just put a disclaimer out front. This is probably something that you shouldn't do and probably I shouldn't do, right? I have to take the existing airbag cover off which means I have to take the airbag out and then repack the airbag into this airbag cover. So don't try this at home. I've watched some other YouTube videos do it, but if you do it, you're doing so at your own risk as I am in doing this. Hopefully there is no explosions today and my airbag goes in just fine. But I'm gonna give you, a, I'm gonna show you at least as best as I can how I'm doing it. And uh, hopefully you'll find this video useful. Okay, so I'm here in the car and I need to take off the steering wheel. And in order to take off the steering wheel, I have to take off the airbag. And that's probably the most difficult part of this job. I've watched a few videos on this and every single person has struggled with this airbag removal. There's been a couple folks that do it quickly, but some folks have said it's taken them a while to do this. So I'm gonna show you how to remove the airbag. Now I'm gonna show you where it is first and then I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the negative battery terminal so this thing doesn't explode in my face. So here's what I would recommend. I would recommend turning the car on just to make it easier to turn the steering wheel. The radio just came on here. And you'll see here, there's that one hole. So there's a hole here. And then on the other side, there's another hole, right? You don't wanna do this with the car on, obviously. So once I kind of have the steering wheel upside down, I'll turn the car off and that'll allow me to kind of wiggle the steering wheel a little bit to get to those holes. Now, uh, you want a small flathead screwdriver and this one actually may be a little too small, but you're gonna basically go into this opening and you're gonna try to feel it kind of a couple different clicks here and you're gonna try to pry it up to release it. I've heard you have to pry really hard to do this. And so I'm gonna do that. Um, what is inside, and I'll be able to show this once it's off, but there's a spring and that spring, once you pry it, it releases a set of clips that will pop this airbag so you can take it off. Of course, it's dangerous because airbags can explode if they have the right voltage, which is why I'm going to disconnect the negative battery terminal now that I have the steering wheel upside down. So the battery is located, I believe, underneath the spare tire. So I'm gonna take the spare tire out. And then once that is out, uh, I should have access to uh, the battery. There it is. Okay. Okay, and then uh, this is the negative terminal here. So I think you need a 10 millimeter to disconnect this. So I'm gonna go grab a 10 millimeter and get this disconnected. Okay, so I'm in the car and I'm gonna take off this airbag cover here. I've disconnected the negative battery terminal. So there's no, none of the lights or any other things are working. And I'm gonna use a small flathead screwdriver. Okay, so we got one side. It's pretty easy. Uh, once you know how to do it, what I did was I, I went in, I kind of moved out one to, you'll feel like three grooves if you get to the second groove here. And then you push in and pull up and you'll feel it release. Now we're gonna do it on the other side. There we go, okay. I'm gonna do this here again. Push it to the top, slide it in, feel that second groove, pull down. See, did it go? Nope. Not quite. There we go. Okay, so now you should see here that it's fully released. It's completely separated here. I can pull it out. Now, the best thing to do is to rotate it. You can all the way back to the top. Now, once you have it rotated back to the top, should see that green clip in there. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so you'll want to have something to 
use to take that. Um, I have these little picks here to pull that green clip out. So I'm just gonna grab one of these, one of the thicker ones. You can use any kind of pick. See if I can finagle it in there. Okay, and I'll release that. So now that the green clip's released, you should be able to pull. Okay, so now I'm just gonna try to go in and remove this yellow, yellow uh, connector. Pull on it. Okay. All right, so the yellow connector is released. Now inside here is another connector that's kind of seated in this housing, so you'll pull that out. So this one's a little bit trickier to remove. I can tell you from the last time I did it. There's a little clip in here. Not sure if you're seeing that, but you have to kind of get under there. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try this pick again. I don't want to pull on the wires. I just want to pull on the connector piece. So this one is a little bit harder. So I'm gonna try just some different things until I get it working. There we go. Just slide it a little bit. There we are. Okay, so now it is disconnected. And you can see here, if I turn it this way, these are the two, let's make sure you guys are seeing this here. These are the two uh, springs that you're trying to compress in order to release it, okay? And this is a dual stage airbag. You can tell it's a dual stage. Let's see if I can hold this by this little thing that goes around it here. So we're gonna take this inside and gently and hopefully safely try to remove the airbag. So I'm here with both airbags. You can see this one is, or airbag covers, I should say. You can see this one still is attached in here and you can see the differences. Um, I'm taking quite a few precautions to make sure everything goes okay. Now, I don't really think I can generate enough static charge to actually ignite this thing, but I don't wanna take any chances. I'm wearing rubber shoes. I actually have put a mat above my carpet because I don't wanna create any static electricity through my feet and, or my socks. I'm actually wearing this little wristband here, which is a grounding wristband that you would normally use for working working on computer repair. So just trying to do everything I can to be safe. Now, there's some great videos or there's at least one really good video that shows you how to do that. So I'm gonna link that in the description below if you want something that's a little bit more detailed. That video is about 18 minutes long and goes, it also explains a lot about the airbags, but I'm gonna try to condense that here in my video. First thing you'll notice is there are four bolts here that are eight millimeters that you will need to take out. You're not gonna do that first, but um, you'll just need an eight millimeter socket wrench to do that. And then this is a dual stage airbag as well. So you'll notice that because it has this section here, which is the dual stage. Um, I, I don't know, the other video explains how it works, but I'm not gonna go into all of that. And then you'll of course see these little metal clips here that show where uh, it does cinch in. So the first thing we're gonna do is try to pry this up. And I'm gonna try to use this pick. I don't really have a good pick to do this with, but I'm gonna give it a go to try to pry this up and see how it goes. Let's see if I can get my finger in here. Kinda of have to release this clip here on the side and pry it out of this housing. This isn't quite long enough, so I'm gonna try a screwdriver here See if I can use a screwdriver to release it. I'll just use my fingers to pry it up. So I noticed that there's these little, little, uh, you can see there's a different color between the outside piece and the inside piece. So uh, you gotta pry that from underneath it. I'm trying to do that in a way that doesn't damage the clip so it goes back in. So you really have to push, it's hard to see this black piece away and out so that you can pull this up. I've gotten it on one side. Feels like it's coming. There we go. Well, certainly not as easy as I would like. I'm gonna release that loop there. All right, so now that that's free, we're gonna take uh, an eight millimeter and we're gonna go through and disconnect all of these. 
The next thing is we're gonna separate the uh, plastic house body here from the airbag cover um, and just kind of pry it. Now, this will take a little bit of finagling. So you just need to work it around. You can kind of grab here and just kind of keep pulling. But the goal is to just separate these two pieces. Um, some pry tools, I have some tiny pry tools here from uh, working on computers. But if you have pry tools that you use for cars, this might help as well. Uh, to get in there and just start separating it, like getting down into it and prying it up here around. You can see it separate as I do that. It makes it a lot easier. Okay, then once you have that off, you're gonna put it aside. Now you'll notice here this notch before I put it back, this little string is gonna feed through the top here where this string is. So when we put it back on, that's one of the ways that we'll align it. We also have alignment posts here on the side and we're gonna put this somewhere over here away from any static, okay? Now we can just breathe a little sigh of relief and we'll start working with the airbags themselves. Okay, so you can, I'm trying to align them here so you can see uh, the top, but you, you should be able to see that it's very similar. You have kind of the post here at the top, you have a post here as well and a post here. Um, and all of these little things match up. So this looks like it's the right airbag cover for my car. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to gently remove the existing airbag. You do not want this thing to unfurl when you're doing it. So the best thing you can start doing is to just open these little flaps and just get let them kind of get loose. You can see they're kind of snug and tight. Just break them free from the airbag so that the way you get a little loose here, this one's pretty big. And then you're gonna start kind of weaseling it out for lack of a better term. And just look for any creases and gaps starting to show up and try to avoid those. And of course you can use the pry tools as well to just get in there and just maybe start pulling it out a little bit, creating a little gap. Work slowly, no rush here. Get your fingers down, pull it away so you're not pulling the airbag apart. Just watch for the, the airbag cover catching on the airbag itself. This section right here is the hardest because it doesn't have any give to it. Okay, see it coming here. Okay. okay. So it's really, you see it's nice and compact. We're gonna keep it that way. Okay. So now we're gonna go and try to work it back into the other one. And do the same thing, slowly. These are even stiffer. Slowly but surely we're gonna work it and we're gonna align Align it in here. Try to make it as even as possible. As we're aligning it, pulling, just making sure nothing's catching before I shove it in, in case we need to turn it. I'll take a pause here and just double check. Okay, so what you wanna make sure you're doing is if you look here, you'll notice that there is this little slit in the airbag and that is absolute center and that aligns to right here. So I'm a little off right here. So I'm just gonna to try to rotate this till I'm dead center. I'm really just trying to line it up and make sure that I'm dead center before I put it in. So once I'm there, I can just start going around. Once again, lift the pedals, make sure you're not folding it not adding creases where they're not supposed to be any. Trying to be even on all sides. By far the top part here is the hardest, so just wanna make sure that you're giving it space to go down there. Looks like 
we're just a little bit rotated here. So I'm just gonna turn it, make sure everything's aligned. Make sure we're getting all of these up here. Okay, that was some backbreaking work trying to get this thing in and I'm still not 100% confident it's in as flush as it needs to be to go back into the housing. But we're gonna give it a go here. So it's in there, the pedals are pretty close. You see things are aligned fairly well. I have this aligned here to the center. I've twisted and turned and moved as much as I can. So it looks pretty good. I don't really know if I can move it much more at this point, so. Um, we're gonna try to hook it back in and see what happens. All right, so let's get it fed through to that hole there. I can already tell you this is gonna be a nightmare trying to get it in here, back in here. That's gonna be, that's gonna be rough stuff. Well, that was an absolute nightmare. I am drenched in sweat, I'm exhausted. Um, my recommendation is really make sure you align it well and get the airbag all the way in. And then when you start push, trying to push this thing in, start with whichever ones are the hardest first and then work your way from there. Um, this was, let me just say, it was awful. And I now I still have to rotate it and I'm hopeful that I can rotate it because I'm not taking this thing back out. I mean, I literally feels like my hand is going to break because of how hard this has been. So uh, good luck to all of you who try this. It's uh, it's no fun. Now that the studs are aligned, I'm just going to push it down evenly here. I'm already still oh, this thing's already slotted itself back in. Awesome. So I'm going to have to go and undo that here in a second. And then I'm going to uh, feed these back on and tighten them. And of course, just go in an X pattern. Make sure you're not cross threading them. You don't want to torque them down too tight. They were very easy to get off. So don't over tighten it. So it's nice and loose, okay. Okay, good. Now you're gonna wanna reattach this guy over this thing, fit it into that slot there. Then you're just gonna push this in until you hear a click. There you go, push it down, make sure it's clicked in. And just make sure those are in the grooves. Okay, just gonna use the back of this here to just make sure it's clicked out. Okay, yep, not coming out. Just close those up a little bit. Okay, so now it's ready. Looks good to uh, go back into the car. So let's go do that now. Okay, so I'm back and I have the new cover here, airbag cover. So we're gonna slot it in. First thing we need to do is hook up these connectors. So we're gonna hook up this connector first that we disconnected here. The battery still needs to be unplugged as we're doing this, right? So let's make sure we keep that. I'm just trying to feed this into 
a slot in here, you should see it. And then we're gonna push this in. So Try to feed it over, push this in, and then slide that in. Once that's there, then we should be able to center it and click it in. So now we have the new airbag cover in. It looks so, so, so much better than the old one. Uh, can't wait, I'll take a picture and show a comparison here, but just looks fantastic compared to the other one. So what are my overall impressions of the airbag cover, the installation and the final fit and finish? Well, overall, I think the quality is fantastic. It looks great. I mean, if you just look at it with, especially with the carbon fiber steering wheel, it looks so much better than the original airbag cover. Um, I've been really pleased with the company, the communication, the back and forth, the shipping, the price, you know, just the steering wheel and the airbag cover together. It was a really great uh, experience. And don't forget the paddle shifters as well. As far as the installation is concerned, it's a challenging installation. Uh, it's nerve wracking. You're always afraid the airbag is going to explode. Uh, maybe that's a little bit overblown, but it was certainly a concern for me. And also it just was hard to pack in the airbag properly. Um, I think it's still a little off center if I'm being honest. So I think it's a little bit to this angle. I've taken it off, I've adjusted it. I can do it again, but it's just so time consuming and it's so difficult at when you try to do that. In addition, um, for whatever reason, I really have to push it down to get the hot horn to work now. It's not, doesn't really uh, engage as easy as it used to, but you know, that's okay. It was my first time doing this. If I really wanted to fix the airbag cover and just, you know, get it adjusted a little bit more, I could unpack the airbag and repack it in, but it's just a lot of work and I haven't really wanted to go and do it. So overall, I would highly recommend it. Um, just get, know what you're getting into with the airbag cover. The steering wheel is a much easier installation. Even though I had issues with some of the wires splitting and everything, I would much rather do the steering wheel than the airbag cover. Both took a considerable amount of time and take a little bit of patience, but um, they're both worth it if you want to upgrade and have this really nice look. Thanks again for joining me. We appreciate every like, subscribe, and comment. We especially like the comments, so please leave a comment below. Let me know what you liked about this video, if you have any ideas for other videos, or if you've done this installation before. All right, thanks again for joining me. Bye.